Hey everyone and welcome back. I've been using my new mill for almost 4 months now, and I'm very happy with it. At least compared to what I experienced with the lathe, the mill is a much more complete package right out of the box. However, there are certainly still some quick improvements that you can do that will really improve the mill when you use it. The first thing I'll start with is the clutch on the table lead screw. Not every mill will have one, but they are definitely found on the X2 mills. The idea is that you push the hand wheel in to engage a dog clutch in order to be able to drive the lead screw. It's very useful if you install a power feed on the table, and power feeds are very useful to have, though they are a bit expensive. However, I don't currently have one, and pushing against the spring to engage the clutch every time you want to use the table can be a little bit tiring after a while. So I recommend you just flip the spring and the clutch in the subassembly, and the improvement will be very noticeable. The next thing I'd recommend will be swapping out the quill and locking bolt for a proper handle. The stock setup is just a cap head screw which you tighten with an allen key to lock the quill and it works fine but if you need to do a lot of fine adjustment using the quill a permanent handle is the way to go. Now I personally need the ability to remove the handle periodically so instead I went with a different solution. I removed the M10 cap head screw and I chucked it in the lathe. I drew it a further 5mm into the hex head using an 8mm twist drill and then I glued in a rare earth magnet. The magnet will be strong enough to keep the hex key from falling out but will allow me to remove it when necessary. There are many ways of doing this, it doesn't really matter how you do it, either way it's going to be a lot better than the original design. The next thing I'd recommend would be inserts for the T slots. Even though I have a decent shot vac, no matter how hard I vacuum, I tend to get left with a bit of a build up underneath the T slots, and it gets a lot worse when I use coolant. Typically I'd have to use a brush to remove it. However a cover for the bed, or an insert to go in the T slots, should prevent this. I've seen a lot of various designs out there, and they all achieve similar results. I've seen people make wooden covers for the table, but I went with the other type. These are M12 T slots, so I bought some 12mm aluminium channel from the hardware store and I cut them to the appropriate length. In total I spent about $10 for 2 meters, and each piece easily snaps into the T slots. The aluminium channel will prevent chips from falling into the T-slots and it will allow for easy vacuuming. However the seal isn't so tight that it prevents coolant from flowing into it. Overall it's a huge improvement and to be honest I really do like the look. The next thing I'd recommend would be using a coolant or cutting fluid of some type when you are milling. Using coolant is a lot more necessary when milling than it is when you use a lathe, and it really helps to extend the life of your end mills, and end mills are a lot harder to sharpen than say a lathe tool, and they are a lot more expensive. So it really does pay to use a cutting fluid of some type to extend the tool life. Cutting fluid however tends to be a little bit of a mess when you use it on the mill, so I like to use it in small quantities, either using it with a brush to applicate it, or I use a spray bottle for cuts that require a lot more cutting fluid. Now I've mostly stuck to using low odor kerosene, and every now and then I use some WD-40. Now I prefer kerosene because it's inexpensive, I can pick it up for about $2 a litre, and it works great as a cutting fluid. You'll see it referred to in Machinery's Handbook very often, and when it's vaporised it's not toxic. And even though the label does say it's flammable, I wouldn't worry about it, it's pretty safe to use as a cutting fluid because of its high flash point. In terms of storing it and other cutting oil, I've always been very keen on using those anti-spill cups but the plastic ones I've found didn't last with kerosene stored in them. That's why I've been using glass as it's pretty resistant to solvents, but I've had a few smashes by accident because of the table vibrating from the mill, so I want to prevent that in the future. I cut out a piece of pine from an offcut from an old project. I then glued the glass jar to the bottom. 
and I made sure to sand the bottom of the glass using some sandpaper to give the glue something to bite into. Whilst the glue dried, I took the lid and chucked it on the lathe. I drilled a hole and used a boring bar to form a funnel shape. And that's the part done. The insert has a really nice snug finish, and the glass jar should be safe from getting smashed. And the glass jar should be far away enough so that the chips don't get flung into the cup. Easy mod, but I certainly recommend it. And whilst we're on the topic of coolant, if you're using it in any meaningful amount, you'll need a way to drain it from the table. The 2.7mm has a coolant drain as standard. Unfortunately though, the manual doesn't exactly refer to what type of thread this is. Because it's a coolant port, I originally thought it might be a BSP or NPT pipe thread. However, it turned out to be a metric M16 by 1.5 or a fine pitch M16 thread. It's not exactly common, but at least it is metric, so I can work with it. I'll be making a draining port using some leftover brass. I haven't used the lead screw to cut threads for a very long time. I swapped out the lead screw gears and verified that I got the right ratio to produce a 1.5mm pitch. And I should note that I can't use the lead screw under power, so every time I cut threads, I'll have to feed it manually by hand. And a test fit shows that we got a really good fit. So I went back and parted the piece to its final length and faced up the end. Over at the mill, I machined down a face for the 90 degree bend. My collet blocks haven't arrived yet, so I'll have to hold it in the vise this way. Back at the lathe, I machined a pipe section and parted it off. The two parts have a really good fit together, and it's tapered slightly at the top to accept a solder joint. I drilled a final hole to meet up with the pipe. This part will screw into the table and will allow for drainage. I'll be using 5mm vinyl tubing and a pipe clamp to hold it in place and I made sure that the pipe would stand up to being in contact with the kerosene. Before screwing in the part, I coated the threads with some silicon grease to prevent leaking. Below the mill table, I mounted an old bottle to collect the kerosene. The pipe routes through a hole that I drilled into the cap. And a quick test shows that the table drains very nicely. Overall, I'm pretty happy. The only thing that I might change in the future would be adding a little bit of mesh to filter out some of the finer chips. The next thing that I'd recommend would be a chip guard or chip shield. Mills tend to throw chips in every direction, and as an operator, this is not that great. A chip shield should help reduce this. I made one using a plastic screen from a junked cordless drill case. I cut it to shape and I cut it so that it would fit around the vise. However, I mistakenly thought that this was acrylic and I tried to remove some of the scratches using sandpaper. And I tried pretty much everything in the book. Polishing compound, buffing wheel, flame polishing. Though for some reason I just couldn't get the haze out of this. So I just accepted that I junked the part. However, I can still show you that this solution works. 
The plastic is held to the vise using two magnets and it helps catch a good chunk of the chips that are flying off using the fly cutter. However in the future I will be ordering some proper acrylic to make one and that will be a lot better. But for now I accept that I probably junked this one. I really don't know why I couldn't get the scratches out of this because I've done it before. Obviously it was some mystery plastic but at the end of the day it's not a huge issue. The final thing that I recommend are floor mats. Having floor mats is really good because chips that make it onto the ground tend to be very small and very sharp and they will bite and get stuck in your shoes. I picked up this floor mat for about $7. It lets the chips fall through and it allows you to vacuum them up later. It's a really good addition, certainly worth it and only needs to be placed where you tend to stand. And those are my easy and quick meal upgrades. I hope you find them useful, I hope you learned something, and with that, thank you very much for watching, see you in the next one.